Hello, everyone. So uh, I know it's been a while since I sent a video from our, our last uh, class, but uh, I promise from now, like I'll send like consistent videos till we finish the lesson. So let's get right into today's lesson. So the last time we talked about two types of candles where we talked about the bull candle and the bear candle. So we said we, there are two main types of candles. And what we said was that the candles are the one that is recording the price movement. So if price is pushing up, you have a candle that represents the, the up movement. And if price is pushing up, you have another candle that is representing the... So if price is pushing up, you have one candle that is representing the up movement. And if it's pushing down, you have another candle that is representing the down movement. So the candle that represents the price movement to the downside, mostly it's represented with a red color, but it, it's not always a red color. Like on the chart you have on trading view, you are the one that will decide which color it should be. But by default, it is mostly red and green where the candle that is going down is the bear candle and the one going up is a bull candle. And we also explained that, so this is the, the bear candle. So the, we also explained that the reason why these candles are called bear and bull is because they are, the way they behave is uh, similar to the way these two animals fight, the bull and the bear. So the bear will fight from the upside to the downside, so going down, and then the bull will fight from the downside to the upside. So for example, I have a chart here, the charts I have here. So for me, I've made my colors red and black. So red is the one representing the push down in the market, and the black is representing the push up in the market. So you already know this this side is where we have the price so when anytime price goes down we have the candle forming and the candle is also represented by time so you would set the time to that the candle should record the price change so currently this time i have for the candle is on one hour so i believe you are already familiar with this stuff before like already from like this the sessions we've done okay so here let's zoom in and look at this candle here so this is a black candle this black candle started from here and finished here in one hour and then the wick here is telling us that even though we started here and we ended here before we ended here we also came here before we came back to end here and that's why we have a wick here and here too even though we started here, we came down just a little bit before we continue going up. And then we came here before the end of the one hour. And then this red candle signifies that we came down. So it means we started here and then we finished here within a period of one hour. But the week here and here is telling us that, okay, we started here, but we, we push up a little bit. And then we came all the way here to close here. But before the time of the one hour was up, we came here a little bit before we came here. And then after it is done, anywhere one candle closes, the next candle would open. So this candle opened here, right, went up a little bit, came down and closed here after one hour. But before it closed, it came down like that. So if you look at any candle, you'll be able to see how the market was reacting to these prices. And that is how you'll be able to read this and help you to predict the direction the market is likely going to go. I hope this makes sense. I, I explained this in our last session. I wanted to just give a little recap before we start with today's lesson. So as I said from our previous meeting, today we are going to look at candle types, types of candles, types of candles. So, the candles also called the japanese candlesticks 
go let's go back to the chart if we go back to the chart we can see they they, they look way different like some are big some are small some have very long wigs some have short wigs and so many different features as we can see here right this one has long wig and it doesn't even have a body right so we have so many different types of candles and different people have come up with different theories that say that okay if you see this candle that candle that can do it means the market is going to go up and down and stuff like that but that is not what we are going to look at the main reason is i am not someone that believes in those kind of concepts it is based on i'm not saying it doesn't work but it is based on a, a totally different perspective i don't know if we've discussed brokers but i don't know if i should bring this but then the candles look different depending on the kind of broker that you are using so when you are trading just like a, i think the best example would be like your phone your phone some people are using mtn some are using etl some are using other network right we all make phone calls right but the services vary a little bit so when you are trading to this candle is coming from a broker it is a broker that is getting us this information this is this currency is what usd canadian dollar like we can see here so this is the data of the dollar and the canadian dollar the us dollar and the canadian dollar that is being illustrated here so this is an information that is reported by a broker another broker would also report the same thing the prices will be the same but the way it is represented in the candles defy a little bit so if you are looking at solely a few candles to make your decision you it comes with like a lot of errors and it makes it sometimes a little difficult to just look at the candles and be able to predict what it's doing but unless you are looking at it from a very big time frame mostly you, there can be errors on the one hour time frame 30 minutes time frame but on the daily time frame weekly time frame mostly even if there are errors it is very minimal right so those kind of uh, approaches of looking at the market where they look at one two three candles and be able to say okay this will go up and stuff like that those ones will come later it is not something i'm going to teach because i'm not someone that believes in those kind of stuff but then later when you start trading and then you get exposed to other things and you want to experiment with stuff like that remember to look at those kind of stuff on a bigger time frame don't look at a smaller time frame so we are going to look at four main types of candles and of types of candle we are not going to look at there are so many different types of candles as you can see if different sizes different wake size and all that but we are going to look at only uh, only four types of candles right so these four types of candles that we are going to look at for the purpose of our lesson i'm not saying there are only four types of candles there are so many different types of candles but we are going to look at four types of candles very important you can uh, look at just those type of candles and based on what i'm going to explain to you just knowing those type of candles will give you a really general understanding of all the candle types and with other things that we'll be looking at you will be good in analyzing the market you don't need to learn all those other candles to be able to analyze the market right so the first type of candle that we are going to look at is called a doji so i'll list all the four candle types and then we'll go through them one after the other and then we'll look at some examples so we'll look at the doji we'll look at the spinning top and then we'll look at hammer 
and most importantly, we'll look at the engulfing candle. So most of the time, I cover the first three and then I leave the last one for another session. But because of the way it's been a very long time we had class, I'll try and fuse everything together. And I'll be a little fast in explaining it. And then so that we'll have a discussion going and stuff like that. All right. So the four types of candles that we are looking at, we'll start with the doji. Number one, doji. Doji, doji, doji. So the doji is a candle that has no body. No body. So we, the candle has a body and a wick, but this type of candle has no body. And what does, if it has no body, what does it signify? It's, it signifies indecision in the market. Indecision. So it means the can, if the candle has no body and it signifies indecision in the market, what it's basically saying is that the market opened and closed at the same point for the time of the candle. So what I mean by this is if we're looking at the one hour time frame, it means that from the time the market opened, it went up and down, up and down, but the time the market closed. If it was a one hour, at the end of the one hour, it came back and closed at the same point. So let's quickly look at an example of such. So this is a very perfect example here. So this is a doji here, right? So what does this mean? This candle has no body. You can see it's just weak. So what it means is that this candle open here, it might have come here or come here. But then at the end of the, the four hour time frame, it closed at the same point. The only time we would have a body is if we open, let's say, up, and at the end of the period, we close down, then we'll have a candle with a, a bearish body. If we open like this candle here, right? We open here and we close down here. That's why we have a body, right? This black candle here, we open down here and we close up here. So the distance between the open and the close gives us the body. But if we have no body, it means that we open here, the market went up and down, up and down, and still came to close at the same point. So it has no body. Let's look at other examples of dojis. Other examples of doji. All right, so this is another example of a doji. Right. So here, the market, open went up and down within the period of one hour because we are looking at the one hour candle and still close at the same point that's why we don't have anybody right and we are saying that when this happens it represents indecision in the market indecision means that at that point the market is not decided on which direction it wants to go yet but mostly so for instance we're coming here so I know this might not make sense to you, but try and like reason with what we are looking at right now. So the market was here. Look at just the direction. We came all the way down here and all of the starting we have indecision. So if we have indecision, this is telling us that the market does not really have the intention to continue going down because it had a very big strength going down all the way and all of the sudden it is not decided. It means it is trying to, it doesn't necessarily mean it is going to change direction, but it's like the market is not really sure if it should continue going down, which is a sign that there could be a possibility of the market changing direction. And then it did change direction, right? So have that in mind, but that is not the main thing when you see a doji, that it doesn't mean the market is looking to change direction, but if you add it to other sort of confirmation, it could give you an idea of what the market is looking to do. So. Same thing here, but here we have like a very small body. You can see like a, a reddish, small reddish body blinking, but this is very close to a doji. Like, so this also qualifies to be kind of a doji, like very close to a doji. Uh, let's look at one more example. 
and then we continue with the other types of candles. So this will be our final example of a doji, right? So what you should do is go to your chart, open any time, any uh, currency. You can go to the one hour, the four hour, and then try and see if you can spot some dojis. If you have difficulty identifying the doji or anything, you can take picture, send it to me to confirm or put it on the, on the group. If you are okay with it, then fine. If you have any question, you can always reach out, right? So that is a doji and it represents indecision in the market. It means at that point, if the market is moving and you see a doji, it means that the market is not decided on the move it wants to make yet. All right, so that is a doji. So we, if you look at uh, different types of, uh, they have like books that talks about different kinds of candle and we have like about five different types of dojis, gravestone doji and all those kind of dojis. Right, but they are not really relevant unless you want to go that route, which I don't I don't encourage you to do. Like your decision to determine the direction of the market is not based on just one candle, it is based on a collection of candles. So you don't really need to study those individual types of candles. Right. And as I said, depending on the type of broker, if I'm trading with broker A and you are trading with broker B. The type of candle that you are looking at might be different. We might all have a doji, but your doji might be a normal doji. Mine might be, uh, uh, mine might be this, and another person's doji might be this. But it's the same market. It doesn't matter what you are seeing. The market, if the market will go up, it will still go up. So that is where my analogy is coming from. Right. So let's look at the the next type of. So we are done with doji. The next type of candle that we are looking at is called a spinning top. So from the name spinning top, it means there is something at the top of something that is spinning. Spinning means rotating. So have that in mind, spinning top, right? So what is a spinning top? So when we say spinning top, the spinning top candle is a candle that has, so this is number two. Spinning top. The spinning top candle is a candle that has uh, relatively small body. So when we say relatively small body, it means that like it's not like really small. It's not like really big. Like there is no like a a, a direct definition of what the a small size is. Like when you see it, you see like it's kind of small, and it has like uh, almost. almost equal weights at both ends, at both ends of the candle, right? It has almost equal weights at both ends of the candle. So uh, let me make an illustration here. So we are talking about something of this sort. Okay, this is not relative, this, this will be big. <laughs> We have something that looks like relatively small, something like this. And you have wigs at both sides of it. And mostly the wigs are long, so you have longer wigs. At both sides of it, like this. So this is a, an example of explaining. So sometimes you have, the body can be really small like this. Sometimes the body can be small like that. That's just, that still qualifies to be
So let me say this. So this does not mean the spinning top is only a green like candle, like it can be any candle. I mm -hmm. just didn't. I just didn't want to change the. I just didn't want to change the color of the candle. All right. So it's it has a relatively smaller body, and then you have long wicks at both ends of it. So what this means is like you have like the candle, the the body of the candle is like situated in the middle of the two wicks. So what this means is that you have the the, the market going equal almost equal distance at the top and equal distance at the down. That is in terms of the wick and comes and close in a central part of the two weeks. So this is very similar to the, the very similar to the doji, only that this has a body. So the, there is a, a, the market moves a little distance away from where it's open, but in terms of either deciding to go up or down, you see that it goes it almost equal distance to the upside equal distance to the downside and close somewhere within the central part, which means even though there is a, a body, uh, there is not, the, 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 it's not so clear of what direction the market is looking to go because it went almost equal distance within the two weeks. So this represents the spinning top represents instability. When you see the spinning top, it means the market is not stable at that point. So very similar to the doji, which shows uh, indecision. So let's look for some examples. So we'll, we'll target about four examples. And then you practice and see if you can find some. So this would be our first example of a spinning top. So it, it doesn't it doesn't matter what type of candle. It doesn't matter what type of candle is it, whether it's a blue candle or a bear candle, as far as it meets the criteria. So here we have relatively smaller body, and then we have long waist, which are almost of the same size at both ends of it. So here, this is a bearish candle. It means we open here and then we close here. No, sorry. <laughs> the, the black candles are bullish candles, sorry. So we open here and then we close here, right? But we went almost the same distance to the downside as the distance to the upside. So it's like the body is in the central part like that. Uh, let's look for more examples. Yeah, this is another example, yeah. All right, so this is a bearish spinning top. So here we have the market open is a bearish candle. So we open at the top and we close down here. And then we have long wicks, which are almost the same size to the downside and then the upside. And the body is almost situated in the middle like that. So this is a spinning top like that. And we say this represents what instability. So mostly when this happens, at this point here, yeah, the market is not really sure whether to continue going down or up, or uh, the market condition is not really stable for you to start trading, right? So very similar to the doji, right? Let's look for another candle. So this would also qualify to be a spinning top, right? This black candle here, right? So you already know from the explanation, you already know what this is. So you have the central body in the two almost equal ways. So we have another one very close here. So this will be the last example I look at. Right? Almost a relatively smaller body in the central part of the two weeks, right? Does it make sense? I hope it does. All right, so let's look at the third type of candle. The third type of candle which is the look at doji spinning top. The third type of candle we are looking at is a hammer. 
So I believe any of you have seen a hammer before. So this is how a hammer look like for those of you who have not, if you happen to not see a hammer before, this is what a hammer looks like. So a hammer is what we used to nail, like be used by cupping test to, to put a nail in a wood or any circumstance where you have to use a hammer, right? So this is a hammer. No, let's look at an actual hammer. <laughs> Right. Not a car hammer, the hammer hammer. Is that how to spell it? <laughs> Why is it giving me hammer two? Yes, so this is the hammer. So this is a good representation of what we are looking at. We have like the handle and then the the metal part at the top like that so let's go back so in terms of candle this is what we are looking at so you have a very long wick and sometimes you will have a very small wick sometimes too there is no wick at all at the top side Sometimes it can be like this. And you can also have it in the opposite way, like that. The same thing. Sometimes you have a wick at the downside like that. Sometimes too, you would have Sometimes too, you would have no, you would have no wick like that. All right, that makes sense. So the hammer, what a hammer represents is, mostly when you see the hammer, it's, it, is, it is part of the science that you see. It's part of the science that you see when the market is about to reverse, or in other words, change direction. I'm not saying that is what you see when the market is changing direction, but it is one of the signs you look out for. So what does this actually mean? So let's say, let's say this is a bullish candle. It means it's going up. If we open here, right? And then we close here, but we have a very long wick going to the downside. What is the wick is telling us that price was here. So if we open here, we came all the way here, but the market failed to close here and we came all the way back here. This is telling us that the market had no intention of going to the downside because we came all the way here. And we came back to close here, which means the market had no intention of going to the downside. The same thing here. If this is a bearish candle and we, we open here and then we close here, it means the market came all the way here and it didn't close here, but came down here to close, which means that the market had no intention of going to the upside. So if you add all this information to other information that the market is giving, this could give you an idea of whether the market is looking to turn around or not. And anytime you see the wick, see it, you see it as pressure or rejection. So ideally, under normal circumstance, we are supposed to have a body. So if it's like, it was a body, anytime the candle start forming, it's a body. But then if it doesn't close or the market leaves that place, then it becomes a wick. So it means rejection. So here it means that 
the market was rejected from the downside. It's like it pushed up and then it rejected down. So here too, there is a rejection from the downside. It was coming down and the market pushed up and then rejected and let the, the week. All right, I hope this makes sense. So let's look at some examples of the hammer. I think this should be one of the, the candles that is very easy to identify because of the way it looks. Like you see, So we see one here like that. So this is a hammer. hammer. That is also a hammer, right? So this one means that the market tried to push up and then reject that down. This is this also qualifies to be a hammer. This one also qualifies to be a hammer. The reason why I don't like candlestick patterns is in general, it is you it's it's not ideal to just make a decision of one candle. Right? It's you can't just look at one candle and based on that to determine the direction of the market. If you are looking to determine the direction of the market, you look at the whole area or the whole structure and what it is saying to, to decide what the market is actually doing. So let's look at one more example and then we proceed. So the last type of candle that we are looking at is a, the most important candle amongst all the three because it is one of the candles that you could just sing single-handedly with that type of candle be able to help you to know the direction of the market. The other candles are not so really, you, you need more other information make a decision on where the direction of the market will go to. So this is, that will take a longer time for us to go through the whole thing. So I will go through it like the way I've done for the other three types of candles, but to take that type of candle and go into detail and explain how you can be able to use that to determine the direction of the market. So, <laughs> So the, the third, uh, the, the fourth type of candle we are looking at is called the engulfing candle. When we say engulfing, engulfing is a broad word for biology. Right? When we say engulfing, it is used for like very small bacteria, like some other tissue molecules. So when we say something has engulfed something, it means it has swallowed it. So there, there is a 
if there is food here and we have this bacteria that wants to eat this food it it what it does is because this the bacteria does not have I'm just this is not I'm just explaining to you how the engulfing process works in terms of how the borrowed word of engulfing comes about. So this bacteria wants to eat this food. So let me put something here to represent food. All right. This bacteria wants to eat this food. What it will do it, it will try to quell itself like this around the food. I have to try to curl itself so it will do that until it's able to completely cover so it will cover until the body touches and then the food will be in the center and then what the bacteria will do is to, when it has completely touch this one and the food is here, the bacteria will then destroy this part of the, the body and then it will turn into something like this. To become a big circle with a foot inside. And then it will now fold itself back to normal. Like the way it was with a foot inside. Right. So this is the process of engulfing. <laughs> It's has turned into a biology lesson anyway. So engulfing means to swallow. And this is a technique that is used by very small animals like bacteria. And some part of our body also use this strategy to do some other things. Anyway, so when we say engulf and an engulfing candle, one just one candle cannot qualify to be an engulfing candle. One candle cannot qualify to be an engulfing candle. So it means that there is a swallowing that is taking place. There is some sort of swallowing that is taking place. So we know that when the market when the market pushes up with a green candle like this it means the market move from here to here like that so when this happens it means the market move from this point here to that point here right so if after the close of this candle we have another candle but that candle is an opposite candle which is a bare candle move the market down like that So let's change the color of that candle to a red candle. So let me explain this again. We have a green candle, which push the market up from here to here. And then from the point where the market closed, another candle starts, but this candle goes the opposite direction all the way down here. When this happens, we see that the red candle has engulfed the green candle because it has done opposite more than what the green candle did. The green candle moved the market from here to here. This red candle moved the market all the way down here. 
So we can put a line here and say that this is the point where it completely swallowed it and all this point here. And all this point here become extra points. So it swallowed it with this part of the body. And it's left with this part. And it should swallow the body together with the wick. So this type of engulfing candle is called a bearish engulfing because it's the bearish candle or the red candle that is swallowing the green candle. We can have another kind of scenario where we have a red candle that push the market down. Right, so a red candle means you push the market down. The market down like that. The market was pushed down from here to here. So if at where the market ended, we have another candle like this, green candle that goes up like that. Let me change the color. That goes up like this. It means this candle here, has swallowed this candle here. Let me put some wicks. So this red candle pushed the market down here and this green candle came all the way, covered this one and had more candle at the top. So it means that this candle has engulfed this candle here like that. So this is a, bearish engulfing because it's the red candle that is doing the engulfing or the swallowing. And we have a bullish engulfing because it's the green candle that is doing the swallowing. Does this make sense? So let's go to the chart and look at different forms of different examples of engulfing candle. So this one is not as straightforward as the other candles because it, it, it doesn't it is not just one type of candle that you look like. It's a, you look at it's a process. So to help with this, let me change the colors to green and red to help you identify them easily. Right. So this green candle here is an engulfing candle. Why? Because it has covered the red candle here. So this red candle pushed the market down and the green candle pushed the market up. So this green candle has engulfed the red candle. So one, one, thing that some students have taught in the past they get confused is they try to compare this candle to this candle and say this candle has engulfed this but it doesn't work like that this candle comes first and this comes second so the the first candle cannot engulf the second candle it's the second one that can engulf the first one because if it's engulfed if it is swallowing there should be something there that it is getting swallowed so if this was there before, this one cannot swallow the one that is coming next. I don't know if that makes sense. But I just had to throw that out there so that in case you decide to get confused, don't get confused over there. So for instance, another example here. So we have this red candle here, pushes the market from here to here with a wick. And this green candle go all the way here. So on its way up, this green candle should be able to cover the body and the wick and there should be extra body left here so it means that this qualifies to be an engulfing candle so let's look at the uh, an opposite so it, here this candle qualifies to be an engulfing candle but it's very close so we have the bullish candle pushing the market from here to here with a wick and this red candle push the market down all the way here. So our line would be here. There is still more body left here. So this qualifies to be an engulfing candle. The next type of engulfing candle or the next example is the one here. So this green candle push the market from here to here. And the red candle push the market all the way down, covering 
the green candle in as it's going down together with the wicks. This is also, and then This is also an engulfing candle because it's covered a green candle and there is still more body left here. This green candle has also covered a red candle because we have we have more body to the upside. So this red candle has also covered this candle. So this is an engulfing candle. I know it will take you, I know it will take you some time to get around this, especially this particular, this particular one, but with time you should get used to it, try and identify some engulfing candles like that. They're receiving more to that, but as I said, we'll cover this as a separate uh, a separate a separate session right so i'm going to end here go through the chart try and identify try and identify uh, uh, by this type of kind of i promise to stay around what I see for now on end. Hopefully, all right. So, enjoy the class learning.